In 2003, a 13-year-old middle schooler named Savannah Redding was sitting in her math class just like every other day. She was then called down to the office and questioned about five prescription strength anti-inflammatory pills that had been found. Even though she knew nothing about the pills, a strip search was conducted. No pills were found. Savannah and her family later attempted to sue the officials who conducted the search. However, because of a judicial doctrine called qualified immunity, no one was held liable. First, I'll explain how qualified immunity works. Qualified immunity protects police officers from lawsuits even if they violated someone's rights. According to the Electric Law Library, an officer can qualify for immunity if the case fits a two-pronged test. Was the law governing the official's conduct clearly established? And under that law, could a reasonable officer have believed the conduct was lawful? If a judge, not a jury, a single judge, determines that the officer qualifies, there is no trial and the case is completely dropped. Savannah's rights had clearly been violated, but she was given no remedy. This story, published in Human Rights Magazine, is not the only example of how qualified immunity has allowed American citizens to suffer rights violations without due vindication. This issue is important to all Americans, as we all have a moral obligation, a moral imperative, to ensure that our federal government is not infringing on our judicial liberties. As a competitive debater, I recently spent a year researching and debating the elimination of qualified immunity. The doctrine of qualified immunity for police officers causes many civil issues and must be eliminated to ensure justice and safety for all Americans. I will begin by outlining the flagrant violations caused by qualified immunity. Qualified immunity has allowed strip searches, police brutality, and a loss of civil rights in general. Strip searches are protected under qualified immunity. Stories like Savannah's have happened all across the country. It's nothing new and officials, once again, are completely free from damages because of this doctrine. But it's not just strip searches. Police brutality is also protected under qualified immunity. According to Penn Law, in the city of Los Angeles versus Lyons, the court allowed brutal chokeholds to exist within police departments. The court refused to grant relief to a plaintiff who had suffered permanent physical injuries from the chokeholds. Even though the, the chokehold practices had caused 16 deaths over the years, qualified immunity protected these officers. As the Southern California Law Review wrote, immunity protects abusive police practices only. Also, Human Rights Magazine explains how qualified immunity prevent, uh, presents challenges to police misconduct. A loss of civil rights can also be traced back to qualified immunity. According to Penn Law, there is a legal consensus that qualified immunity is used to violate rights. Penn also believes that qualified immunity itself is unconstitutional. According to the Human Rights Magazine, qualified immunity also adds to rights violations because it allows for more judicial discretion, as once again this is determined by a single judge, not a jury. Now that we know the serious crisis caused by qualified immunity, let's look at the best solution, elimination. Qualified immunity's issues can only be solved by complete elimination. According to Sam Wright, a civil lawyer and writer for Above the Law, Congress should be the major player in elimination. Elimination would be swift and widespread. As soon as the bill is enacted, it will immediately go into effect. Of course, officials who previously enjoyed immunity could not be sued again due to the Double Jeopardy Amendment. This will be federal law. No judge in any state will be allowed to use qualified immunity. Costs will be negligible if anything money will be saved. The Southern California Law Review writes that elimination of qualified immunity would save money as the defense costs saved by the elimination of the policy would be substantial. Elimination of this issue would also limit the amount of time spent by plaintiff counsel and limit the amounts paid to plaintiffs in attorney's fees. No substitute or revision to qualified immunity should be permitted. NYU Law Review says complete elimination is far superior to any kind of revision. As I have shown, qualified immunity is too broken to try to fix. Complete eradication is the only option. It is only logical that people should be held responsible for their actions. In America, when someone's rights are withheld, there must be a remedy. Elimination would be swift and widespread. Now let's look at what the American legal system would look like after the elimination of qualified immunity. Qualified immunity's elimination would lead to an increase in justice and safety for all Americans. Elimination would restore justice to the American legal system. 
The Missouri Law Review explained that in Marbury versus Madison, the court ruled that every right, when withheld, must have a remedy. Since qualified immunity directly contradicts this ruling, it is unjust. In a world without qualified immunity, Americans would receive full vindication for the government's transgressions. According to the Southern California Law Review, elimination is the best method because anything else still allows police abuse. Elimination would also provide safety for Americans. Without qualified immunity, police would be held accountable for strip searches, chokeholds, and brutality in general. If they know that they will be held accountable, they will be less likely to commit these atrocious crimes. It's easy to see that America would be a better place if we eliminated qualified immunity. America was founded on the principles of liberty and freedom from government oppression. Qualified immunity is unraveling our bedrock principle that everyone, especially government officials, must be held accountable. In conclusion, the doctrine of qualified immunity should be eliminated because it has caused numerous civil issues. Elimination would help make America a more just and safe nation. You may be wondering how you can help this cause. In fact, it's relatively simple. There are two main ways to fight for the end of qualified immunity. First, you can write to Kentucky Senators Mitch McConnell and Rand Paul. You could also write to the representative from the Louisville District, John Yarmouth. On the screen, you will find contact information for these three officials. Second, and more importantly, you can help this cause by voting for certain candidates in each election year. By using ontheissues.org, you can see what each candidate has said and continues to say regarding different issues. Next election cycle, use this site to determine which candidates will help fight for the end of qualified immunity. For people like Savannah, we all have a moral obligation to end this blatant violation of rights and help make America a better and safer and more just place.